this is Sheila with Successful Women Talk, the Behind the Design show, and I am here with Gretchen Zellick. Now, Gretchen has an interesting story. She's very busy. Mom, she owns a business. She's a mom of four, and she's a fitness enthusiast, and her business is DOD Fitness. So, help me and welcome Gretchen. Hi, Sheila. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Thank you. I need to make sure. I did say that right. I kind of caught myself. I probably had that funny look. I was like, it is DOD Fitness. So that is correct. So you have a great looking website. But before we get started on your story, I just want to ask a little bit about, tell everyone a little bit about your background and how you got started in business. Well, I was the oldest of six kids and we were all very athletic and thrown outside a lot to play. <laughs> Um, when I was uh, little, I was always making things. My dad was an entrepreneur. My mom still makes things, and then we see them sold on the internet quite popular years later. It's really funny. Uh, I was a gymnast and a tennis player in high school. I uh, went to college and played tennis, and I found that by playing a sport, I got a few extra little jobs uh, because it was kind of a, a, a fun thing for somebody to say they had a, a collegiate tennis player there. And then I went and worked on Wall Street. I volunteered uh, a lot. One uh, opportunity I had in particular was uh, inner city kids who needed something to do. So we started a track team for them and they would compete. And I just love athletics. Uh, I moved to San Francisco and I actually uh, continued with a Wall Street firm that hired a lot of athletes. It was funny. So we would go do athletic things on the weekends. I ran beta breakers with a bunch of uh, co-workers and I decided I really, really liked running. I was the only one in my family that didn't run, but I really liked it. Uh, shortly after my first child was born, we moved to uh, Los Angeles and I stopped working at that point. My husband was traveling a lot and it was just not going to be conducive to raising a family. Um, I had four kids. I got involved in a lot of nonprofits there. I always knew there was something else waiting for me, but I just needed to time it right. Shortly after my fourth child was born, I started running again, and I signed up for a road race, a uh, seven-mile race that I had never run that far um, and trained for it, and I really enjoyed it. So then I joined other races, and I started to train for a marathon. Well, shortly into the, the training, my knees started to hurt, my hips hurt, everything hurt, and I realized that I needed more than just a running, a running program. I needed to do a CrossFit or just a, a more generalized fitness program. So I started taking classes at the gym and my knees didn't feel any better. So I explained <laughs> to one of my fitness instructors about the pain in my knees. And so she developed some exercises for me to do during class, after class, and actually incorporated them into the class. So to strengthen my hips, my thighs, my knees, even my ankles. Um, and it, it really worked for me. So we continued talking about how there weren't really a lot of things that people could do when they hurt in the gym. You know, when you're on your knees, everybody would moan about how much their knees hurt. So the instructor would say, well, roll up a towel or take a mat, roll up the mat. But there weren't really a lot of great modifications for that. You, you still were pounding your knees into the ground. It, it was just one of those things you heard from everybody and push-ups oh I hate my wrists hurt whatever so I kinda of thought there's there's something here so I discussed it with my fitness instructor and we decided maybe you know there's something we can do here so I contacted a friend of mine in North Carolina he was a, a former uh, co-worker of my husband in New York City and when his dad was sick he moved down to, to his home in North Carolina and took over his dad's plastics business. <laughs> so I, I was like, perfect. I contacted Davey and he said, what do you need? So for four, at least four to five years, we would go back and forth trying to figure out, I would send him drawings, I would tell him what we needed, uh, he would send something back, all just because he was a good guy. Finally, after about five years, I think we had it tweaked just right. So it was density, it was shape, size, even color. I mean, it was everything we had it figured out. So I sent it out for the next couple of years to fitness professionals, to anybody I knew that worked out, um, to orthopedists, to chiropractors, to, I mean, athletes, kids, my poor kids at the high school. My <laughs> daughter was a, a collegiate gymnast. Her coaches have a big 
box of them, but I needed to get feedback and I needed to make sure that this was something that people would use that it really worked because I knew it worked for me. And so um, at that point, it was 2010, I said, okay, it's go big or go home. We, you know, I've done this enough. This is, was kind of a, a fun thing to do. It, it needed to become real. So I would talk to people and I knew I had a lot of different resources, people I know all, you know, very diverse group of people. Well, the dad at water polo happened to be a website designer. <laughs> you know, one of my best friends, her good friend was a graphic designer. Um, the, my fitness person at the gym highly recommended my publicity person. Um, the accountant was a good friend of ours. The photographer was somebody that I knew at church. It just, it just came together and it was just, it, it, people wanted to see my company work and I wanted to give them business. So it, it worked out perfect. So, and it, it's still a great group of people that um, I can always call. They send business my way. It's just been very interesting to see how it's worked and, I, and reaching out to people. And I would do anything for them and, and they in turn really helped me out. So um, by about January 2011, my um, publicity person took over. We were ready, we had the packaging. Matter of fact, the packaging came from a friend of mine who in a grocery store. <laughs> and I said, how did, where'd you get this from? And so she told me who to contact to get the packaging for you know, my, my products. And then from there, that person told me who to get the labeling from. It just, it just works. You have to ask questions, I've learned that. Oh, I, I have so many things, so many paths I want to go down with what you've said so far. But I think the most interesting thing that you, one of the most interesting things you said is not being afraid to ask. We did an interview, I did an interview a couple of weeks ago, and it's been probably the most popular interview on the show, and it was the power of asking. And so many, especially women, were afraid to ask for help. And you are a true example of being consistent about what you know you want and asking for help in the things that aren't your specialty. That it made all the difference in the world. And the other thing that these people realized, especially my manufacturer, was this wasn't going to happen overnight. So it was a process and, and, it, and it really worked out that way. And it just, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah, I totally agree 100%. You know, another thing that's amazing to me is how many years was that? Five years before it when you started production to actually launching? It was almost seven years. Seven years. Yeah. You know, it's going, you have to be successful because it has taken a lot to go through that process. A lot of people give up and give up early. You didn't. You must have seen something. You know that you've got something there to continue on for that long. Well, I'll tell you, I was worried because I wanted to make sure it was perfect and there was nothing like it on the market, but I was so worried somebody else was going to figure it out and design it and come up with it. And nobody did. So we were, I was very lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, another thing I want to point out is that you said you like, anybody that runs always, I don't run unless someone's chasing me with a knife. So <laughs> I wish I were a runner and I've tried to run, but I am just not. But you know, I, another thing that you said is that when you were a kid and when I was a kid, we were always put outside to play. And this is a little bit off topic, but where do you, you know, we don't, kids don't play anymore. No, they don't. Everything's so scheduled. And, and we would go out even in the winter time. I mean, it just, it's so funny talking to my old friends about digging snow forts. You weren't worried about frostbite or, you know, you something. Care? grabbing you off the front of the, the lawn. It was just one of those things. Yeah, it's it's too bad. I, hopefully, maybe our kids will figure that out and let their kids roam around and play again. I, I agree. Well, that's a little off topic, but I just have to, you know, I, it concerns, like I have a three and a half year old and a two and a half year old, my three and a half year olds, it's too hot. I'm like, we live in Texas. Hot <laughs> is, you have to get used to hot. It's okay. We go outside. That's so funny. <laughs> so it's let true. me ask you, so you finally got, you've launched your product. Where did you launch? So I know you worked with a lot of um, athletes and you use a lot of coaches, etc. Where did you finally decide to sell your product and how did you actually launch it to the public? Well, I'll tell you, before we actually sold it, my PR person compiled a list and it was about a thousand magazines, newspapers, uh, television shows, blogs, and I love 
blogs and bloggers. They, I, anytime somebody asks me for to do a review on my product, I will send it to them because they are powerful and there are a lot of them. But anyways, to get back. So, uh, we sent out, it was, it was close to, it was about between 700,000 of the packages and that I went down to North Carolina and worked at the factory for a couple weeks. Um, doing inventory, quality control, and packaging and shipping. We shipped them out to this list, and then these people took it and ran with it. It was uh, in magazines, blogs, and people tested it, and you knew they were going to give an honest opinion. And I think that's what really helped was they were honest about it. You know, oh, I love the knee dons. Well, I don't have sore wrists, so I'm okay with that. You know, they just they they told it like it was. So once those launched, it, it, orders started coming in on the website. So we have a website, um, dodfitness.com, and that's where people primarily came and bought it, and then on Amazon. And then, oh, sorry, go ahead. So then from there, we, we launched it to the public at IDEA, which is a fitness show in Los Angeles. And that's where I learned how to sell, and I learned about the, the just you know fitness people. And people are reticent to change. They A new product, they don't always grab when it comes to fitness. They need to touch it, play with it. And so we had a lot of converts at that time where you'd see people come up and go, yeah, right, I don't need that. And then they'd try it and say, okay, you know, where can I buy it? It was perfect. <laughs> and then from there I went to CanFitPro in Canada. And I found, and it was interesting, um, the Canadians, they are looking for new things and they will try it. They will buy it without <laughs> trying it. So we had a very successful show there and I met a store there, a, a, retail, a large retail store that actually placed an order and they place a new order with me probably every month and it's been very successful. That is terrific and actually that's the next question I was going to ask is do you see yourself trying to get in from a wholesale level and with some larger retailers and what about fitness centers, 24 hour fitnesses, things of that nature? Yes, 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 and yes. I love it. Absolutely. I actually had a great meeting with a retailer, large retailer last week, and so we're we're working on the fine tuning that in the the contract. So it's a product that should be out in retailers, and it should be in health, uh, you know, health uh, fitness centers because it's something that everybody can use. Yeah, because you see those classes. I do, even though I don't run, I do go to the gym periodically. But you see those classes all the time, and people are always on their knees. So I, now I can just envision them with your product in their gyms as a courtesy that they provide for their uh, clients. Right, just like a mat, just mm -hmm. like you know anything else they have there. Exactly. That's what that's what I think. Me too. All right, <laughs> yeah. so listen, it took you seven years. I'm not hounding you. I actually love that you stuck with it. Seven years to get these products to market. Where do you see the growth of your company going? Where do you see new products? What are you going to do with the business? Uh, definitely new products. Um, perfecting the products we have. Our actually our wedge that we have. We're now going to put a neoprene cover, non-slip cover on it, uh -huh. um, because people. Some people say they slip. Majority of them don't. But why not put it on there anyways? Um, I have a a meeting. I meet with a bunch of fitness people um, every Wednesday, and we kind of brainstorm about things. And we come up with new ideas for them as as well as for me. And it's been really interesting because I, I'm I'm not a fitness professional. I sell fitness equipment, but I'm a lay person who uses you know fitness equipment. So it's really great to get their insight and their opinions. Oh, that's a that is a terrific point. And there again, you are asking and you're using your community. And who better to help you guide the development of your products than people that are actually in the trenches using it? Exactly, and they're a lot of fun too. It's even better. Yeah. And they're all in shape. That's all, that's always a nice thing. Well, you know, another thing that I could, as soon as I saw your website, and then here, here the business person in me, I see, okay, T-shirts, bags, different. I can see so many things going for your brand. I'm really excited for you. Oh, you're wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> it's going to be good. Let me ask you this. I did see some photos on your site. I didn't see like a lot of videos. Have you guys thought about adding a video? Maybe I missed it. If I did, I'm sorry. Video component to your site or? Yes, we actually had a YouTube video on there, but it wasn't very good to look at. It was um, taken outside and it wasn't very clear. So we are going to put some videos on there that are clean and, and easy to look at. That's, you know, there's a lot of people now using, because YouTube, you can do a couple of two, three minute videos. And you, you, the equipment's cheaper nowadays, so you can actually get it with decent lighting and have like a YouTube channel showing diff people different ways of doing it. What good SEO and, and bringing people to your site? Yeah, exactly. I agree with you 100%. Well, awesome. Well, now, you're, you, you mentioned you're not truly an, you're an 
a user instead of a, a, a professional, how do you then convince people that your product is, you know, worthy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yes. I'll, I'll give you a good example. I am in the, I've, I co-owned a furniture and home decor business and I helped start that and I had a medical background. So I knew nothing about it. So to start with, it took me a little bit to learn the field, learn the industry and convince people that, you know, now I can do that. So how do you, how do you deal with that? A couple of ways. The, the easiest way is when I'm at a trade show or even when I just made that sales call, the uh, the buyer kind of looked at me and I said, get on your knees. He said, I have bad knees, I can't. I said, then get on your knees. <laughs> and he knelt down on the knee donuts. He said, okay, sold. And, and so it was more uh, user, user to user talking about it. Now, for other things, trade shows, um, for other calls, uh, sports clubs, I have my, my group of fitness professionals that use them and they swear by them and, and they're um, – they're pretty they're very reliable and they're very respected in their field so that makes a big difference too if they're using them then they must be okay oh see now if this just triggered something in my head you've got to be on the biggest loser I know <laughs> yeah I can see it now your product would be perfect for the biggest loser I say that all the time I have to tell you that's one of my goals Yep, you can, I mean, if you're you're already sending, you sent it out. If you're going to send it out to bloggers, anyways, you're sending that out free free of charge to them. You can do the same thing to um for them. I, I'm liking this. <clears throat> let me right. let me ask you another question. So a lot of people, some people use PR, uh, a PR person. Some people don't. And it sounds like your experience with the PR person has been really positive. Can you give us a little bit of background on PR? It, financially, how you handle that? Because you know, I hear sometimes it can be pretty expensive. So, what's been your experience? It was expensive, and it was a big uh, leap of faith for for me to write those checks. But <laughs> everything else had been on a shoestring. The the manufacturing was most people I think would have had to pay to get these prototypes done, and I was lucky. I I even though I got references from people, I always checked to get the best price. So I felt like everything was done on a shoestring. Um, I felt like publicity was something that I didn't know anything about and I couldn't, um, I couldn't skimp on it. And when I read about my PR person, I got other information from her and saw what else she had done. I realized I needed to, to do it right. Uh, and she did it right. I, when I saw that list of people we sent it out to, and she also, um, will send me things to write about for magazines. I've been, I was just in more magazine and just a bunch of little things that just all add up to, okay, let's check out DOD fitness. Um, but it was worth it. It was, um, it was something I could, I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for her to the point of, uh, selling. And then she also knew people that would help me out. Um, and, and not on the, not on the payroll. She would, whether it's the website or whatever, she's always giving me suggestions and she's become a really, really good friend. So it, it helps that way too, that she, I trust her and she will um, help me down the road no matter what. So beyond professionalism. Oh, that's good. So another, she's like a mentor. She's kind of helping the, helping exactly. you flow. Yeah. And she's been <laughs> in this business a lot longer than I have. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What role does social media play in your business? Like Twitter, Facebook, all of those things. Uh, working on it, uh, we have a Twitter. We're at DoD Fitness. We have Facebook, uh, DoD Fitness, um, and I think it's one of those things you need to really um, focus on. I've been do, trying to build the business, the sales, and it's definitely something I need to work on more. Um, I think it's really fun. I think it's something that um, can really help it lead people to the business. I have um, a bunch of different people besides me that are tweeting for me, and it's. Um, it's, That's helpful. Yeah. My <laughs> well, son. Yeah. It is hard. I mean, you, you have a very good point. It is hard to run a business and then work on a business all at the same time. And, and social media, I agree, plays a huge role. But it's tough to work that in when you you also need to sell and develop and do all those other things. It's, it's, it's a challenge. Well, the other thing is I need boundaries. So I need to know that from this time to this time I'm working because otherwise I would work seven days a week for – you know, 20 hours a day. So I need to make those boundaries where I have family time, I have work time, you know, I have play time. And, and so that's part of it, just making sure that I'm really organized and manage my time so that I can fit in 
things like social media. That's a terrific point. Well, listen, this has been very exciting. I am really excited to see where your business goes. I am most excited to see you on The Biggest Loser. So we, we, we've got, to, we've got to, the PR person has to help you with that. Let's work on that. Absolutely. Let's work on that. We're going to get the word out. We need you. What, I think it'd be a, just a great platform for you. But listen, if you if someone wanted to connect with you, where would be the best place? Well, you can always email me, Gretchen, at dodfitness.com or, uh, you know, through my website, through uh, Twitter, at DOD Fitness or um, Facebook, DOD Fitness. So any of those. I'm always happy to get emails. Awesome. We will link all of those up in the show notes as well. And I certainly appreciate your time. This has been terrific. Oh, great. Thanks, Sheila. It was Thank great you, to you and have a terrific day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Okay, that's our show, and thanks again for tuning in. Hey, I have a huge, huge favor. I'd like for you to join us over at www.successfulwomentalk.com. Join our email list, and on that list, you'll be a, a VIP. You'll be receiving all of our newest updates, newest interviews, our newsletter, and any tips and tricks we have for organizing your business and getting raving fans and customers that uh, actually just sing your praises. So again, thanks again for tuning in. Check us out next week for another episode of SuccessfulWomenTalk.com. Thanks, guys.